Hi everyone, thanks for joining. We're just going to give it a couple more minutes. There's uh, there's still people dialing in here, so just bear with us for a minute. Hey everyone, there's uh, still some people dialing in here, so we're just going to give it maybe one or two more minutes or start um, just before five past. Okay, we're just going to give it one more minute there and then, uh, then we'll get started as we've got a lot to get through today. All right, I think we'll, uh, we'll make a start. Um, thanks to everyone for, for joining this morning. Um, Metric Insights webinar, we're going to be doing a product view with a particular focus on our 5.1 release, which just came out a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm Mike Smitherman, uh, going to be running the, the webinar over here. I've also got uh, Zoe Hadfeld with me today. Hi, Zoe. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Uh, so we obviously have everyone on mute, but I'll be monitoring the Q&A in the chat window throughout the webinar. So you can feel free to enter any questions that you have. We're going to try to keep this as interactive as possible. Uh, we will also have a few minutes at the end to cover any additional ones. And we will also be recording the webinar. So we'll all send out a link out to everyone afterwards. Okay. Hey, thanks, Zoe. So our um, our agenda this morning um, is I'm just going to do a, a quick overview of, of the problems that we're trying to solve here at Metric Insights. These are the things that obviously we're keeping top of mind as we uh, do product development and product enhancements. And you'll see you'll see some of that today, obviously. Um, uh, we'll then go on and do a demo of the solution. We'll try and cover as much of, uh, as, as, much of the solution as possible, um, but obviously I'm going to focus particularly on, on what some of the new features are for, for the 5.1 release. Um, as Zoe said, let's try and keep it interactive. So um, you know, as we go through, type in questions and, and we'll try and get to them as we go along. All right, so just to tee up sort of the the metric insights uh, solution and, and again what we're trying to solve here um, over at metric insights really what we see out in the industry is everyone is is traveling down the same path with their bi strategy 
Um, and they're investing heavily in, in different activities along that path, whether it be sort of collecting data, whether it be in creating reports and interactive dashboards, whether it's investing in new types of technology that enable self-service or predict analytics, whatever it might be. We're seeing huge increasing costs being put into BI, but reality is that most people out in an organization are not really engaging with what's being delivered. Um, so, so why is that? Why isn't BI really working? Well, there's, there's really four sort of items that we've identified. One is, as you invest in more and more technologies, you end up getting more and more siloed systems out there, whether they're, they're source systems containing data or whether they're uh, you know, multiple BI tools um, that, that exist. We're seeing more and more um, organizations that, that have multiple tools for their reporting and BI. What that generates for your users is essentially a game of hide and seek. They don't know where to go and look for the right metrics and data, uh, which systems to look at and where to find that. And if they do find information, often they're, they're overloaded with too much data in, in terms of not having the time to be able to monitor and track what's important. And then finally, if, if they do spot things that are, that are critical within the data, they have no way of really tracking those issues to resolution. <clears throat> So what, what we see out there is, again, a lot of money being spent in, in these efforts, but really not a lot of the content and the data that's getting pushed out is actually actively being used every day. So obviously, this is kind of a broken um, approach. And so metric insights, that's really the problem that we're trying to solve. And we attack it in four ways. And, and obviously, you'll see these in, in the demonstration when we get into it. But there's really four steps to solving this problem. The first is make sure that your users have one place to go to access the data that they need. And you'll see this through the concept of our consolidated portal. The second step is making sure that you don't rely on them having to come in there every day to track everything, that you're pushing out the relevant data at the right time to the right user through, through a distribution method. The third is making sure what you push out is, is only the things that are relevant at that particular point in time, and we'll, we'll touch on anomaly detection and alerting as part of that. And then the fourth piece, piece which is, is new for, for this release that we'll focus on, is the ability for them to take action on those, on those critical events that are happening in the data through what we're, what we're calling managed alerts. So as we go through the demonstration, we're going to touch on these on these four areas and, and again focus on some of the new features in 5.1 that help us um, uh, solve these issues. So for those that aren't familiar with, with the platform, um, very quickly architecturally we build on, on a customer's existing environment. So we sit on top of those investments that you've made in your existing BI. We're able to source data from, from any part of your BI stack, whether it's the source systems through the warehouse or the BI tools. And we use that to deliver those four areas of functionality that we're going to touch on. Um, just as we go through the demonstration, some things to look out for. Um, there are new, and I will, I'll call these out as we go through, but um, we're going to touch on this idea of managed alerts, and, and we'll explain what that is. For those that saw our 5.0 release webinar, you may remember we introduced the concept of data sets and exception reporting. We've enhanced some of that, so we'll, we'll take a closer look and recap some of that. And the third piece is we've introduced a, a much easier way to, to generate metrics within, within the platform, and, and we'll make sure we leave time to cover that. So with that, I think uh, we'll switch across to the demo. So just, just, just a reminder, you guys can ask any questions, and we'll uh, keep this interactive. So yeah, just type them into the chat window or the Q&A as we go through this. Um, so we're going to touch on those four um, areas that I mentioned in the slides. Um, and the first of those, um, and those that have seen Metric Insights before, this will, this will be familiar to you. But the first of those is the concept of our, of our um, interface. And really, this is, 
you know, the first step in solving this, this engagement problem with your users, it's making sure that they, they have one place to go to access and manage the content that they're interested in. So what you're looking at here is, is a portal. Each of these, what we call tiles, is linked to a particular data source. Could again be the underlying data or it could be your BI tools. And each of these tiles is representing either a metric that you're interested in tracking or a visualization from one of your existing tools. So I've got metrics here. I've got um, links to my BI tools such as Tableau or Click or Power BI. And what we're able to do is, um, or what you're able to do is, is to catalog and categorize all the content that you have out there that's available for your users. So you can organize it into folder structures, you can tag um, the content to make sure it's easily searchable. And as a user, I get access to different categories of content that I might be interested in. So in this scenario, I'm, I'm sat high up in the organization. There's different department metrics that I'm interested in. I can easily come in and start to filter through this data to say, you know, show me things that are underperforming or show me things that are coming from a particular data source that I might be interested in. I can more generically search for stuff. So if I'm responsible for a region, show me everything within that region. And very quickly, I can start to filter out and navigate to, uh, to the content that's, that's relevant to me. Um, a small piece that's important in the portal is also the ability to um, what we call certify content. So organizations are creating more and more content. It's not going away. And, and so how as a BI team do you manage um, manage that content, make sure it's accurate, and how the users know what they can trust within, within the environment. We have this concept of being able to certify pieces of content or tiles within the system to ensure that um, when users are looking at this data, anything that's certified, they know that they can trust that and take action on. So again, step one is making sure that through the portal, you're organizing your content, you're certifying your content, you're making it available to your users, and users have one place to come in and navigate and search for what they're interested in. Uh, looks like we have a question coming in, Mike. Can you expand on what types of content can be put in the portal, different data sources, metrics, et cetera? Yes, yeah, so as I mentioned before, we, we connect to, um, to different levels of your BI stack. So data sources can be anything from, from underlying databases where we're instrumenting metrics. We'll talk more about what metrics are as we get into this demo. They can be linking to BI tools where we're actually providing access to the visualizations coming from third-party tools such as a Tableau or a business objects or a click. Um, or they can be you know, just external content that you might want to make available. So here we're linking out to, to a training video for Metric Insights where it's just a piece of content, a document, a video that you want to push. So really it's any type of content that you might want to make available to your users um, from a data and, and information perspective. All right, so step one is the portal make the content available. Um, for, again, for those familiar with Metric Insights, you'll know a key concept in the platform is the ability for users to favorite certain pieces of content um, by clicking on the yellow star on the tiles. What does this, it's basically a way of, of, of allowing the users to express an interest in that bit of content. It creates a, a shortcut to the most important content through my favorites up here. Um, but what it also does is provide the system with the information it needs to start distributing that content out to them. So let's move on to the, the second sort of tier of the product, which is, is the distribution piece. Um, so I'm going to switch over here to show you an example of, of some of the types of distribution that, that we provide in the platform. Um, the first is the concept of, uh, of a daily digest email. So Users have expressed interest um, by, by clicking on the star and creating favorites folders. What the digest will do is every day it goes and looks at 
uh, a particular, you know, everyone's favorites folders. It looks for what's changing in those favorites folders and it pushes out a summary of that to, to every user. So in this case, I can see you know, metrics that have moved significantly since yesterday. Here's a summary of any metrics that have generated alerts or anomalies. It provides me visuals of, of any dashboards or reports that have updated since I last looked at it. So I've got Tableau visualizations, I've got Power BI, click all in one email. And in sort of 60 seconds or less, I can get access to what's changing in my favorites without having to actually um, log in and, and monitor that in my portal. It's bubbling up just the changes. So that's one type of, of distribution, one that, again, people familiar with the platform um, might, be, uh, might be familiar with. Um, the second and sort of the opposite end of the extreme is where we're, we're tracking sort of critical events in the data where we might want to push out immediate alerts to users. So, you know, there's an unusual low within a particular region on a critical metric like sales. I might want to know about that straight away as someone responsible for that user. And we can push those alerts out immediately. Something happens in the data. Um, so, so two extremes in terms of distribution, and here we're looking at, uh, at sort of the email distribution. So how do we determine when um, something require my attention? Um, so we've gone from the portal, we've started pushing out data, we're uncovering these unusual events in the data and what's changing. How did Metric Insights know to send me this email? How did Metric Insights know to include these metrics with anomalies in my digest on one of these metrics? And it's going to take me into that daily sales tile. And we're going to talk about sort of the third pillar here around anomalies. And this tees up one of the new pieces of functionality that we've introduced here. So a metric is a, is a time series piece of data. Um, so in this case, we've got daily sales. We're reading in sales metrics on a daily basis by different countries and regions that we're interested in analyzing. We're also tracking how that is, is changing over time. So down the right-hand right -hand side here, you can see that we're, we're tracking the moving average, when there's highs or lows in the data. We're understanding how this metric is changing on, on a daily basis. And with that, we're able to start uncovering unusual events in the data. Um, a familiar one might be familiar one might be the concept of statistical analysis. So we run a moving average. We look for standard deviations against that moving average, and we deem anything that falls outside of a couple of standard deviations statistically significant and something that we need to take action on. And in fact, that was why this unusual low here. That was what determined that this should be included in my, uh, in my email. Um, obviously, as well, you can also layer on your, your own alerts. So the ability to define your, your own rules. Um, so I can define a new rule against the data where I'm perhaps looking at something against a threshold. So I can say, I want to know if this triggers, if it's less than a particular value, and it happens more than you know, two times in a row over, over the week. So I can start to build my own report uh, alert criteria. I can start to define what um, I want to push out to my users. Through, uh, through email or phone or SMS when that triggers. I can tie it to the metric or the underlying visualization. And then I can um, define how I notify the users of, of that particular event. So is it something that I want to include in my digest or immediately when it triggers? So by building on, by using sort of the, the out of the box alert rules like the statistical analysis and building on your own alert rules um, based on the knowledge that you have with the data, um, you can start to then trigger when these things get distributed out to the users. Now, a new piece here is this concept of assigning what we're calling an, an alert, uh, sorry, a workflow to a particular alert. 
So, so let's, let's look into this. So I'm going to get Zoe to help me out here. But it's the concept of basically saying certain alerts within your environment are critical enough that you need to make sure someone takes action on those alerts and make sure that they get resolved and that uh, you, you understand what happened. And so the idea of a workflow is, is exactly that. It's when an alert triggers, it's making sure that it gets assigned to the right people. It's making sure it gets tracked through to resolution. It's making sure we know exactly what happened with it. So we're going to try and do um, uh, a sort of demonstration of, of how this works. And um, I'm going to go back and forth with Zoe here a little bit. So we'll be, uh, we'll be changing sort of the screen share as we pass this off between people. But the scenario we have here is uh, responsible for the, the Canadian region. Uh, Zoe runs our IT department over in the US. And you remember that immediate alert that we saw before that was um, showing an unusual low in sales in the region? Well, we may determine that this, when it drops like this, is critical enough that we want to make sure that certain people get assessed so they can take an action on it. So when you apply um, a workflow to an alert, it also has the concept of an assignee. And in this case, when we spotted the unusual low, when it drops below a threshold in, in a particular region, we're actually assigning it to the country manager for this region. And in this case, it's me, John, responsible for Canada. And you'll see the difference is that I'm now responsible for acknowledging that I actually received this alert. So I'm going to click on the knowledge button. It's going to take me into that metric that we were looking at, but it's going to pop up the workflow dialog in this case. You'll see it's been assigned to me. You'll see it's got a status of new. Um, I'm just going to move that to in progress because I'm acknowledging that I've seen it. I'm going to save and acknowledge that I've, I've received that alert um, and that I'm looking into it. And you'll see what that does if I hover over the alert um, as it triggered. You'll see that it now has a status and an assignee associated with it. Um, I go off and look at this issue. I, I sure enough see that we've got a drop in sales on this particular day you know i reach out and look at the website it seems to be related to to our online presence we're having issues with the website i can get on it so what i'm going to do is come in and click on this alert again and i'm actually going to reassign it to zoe over in it I, i'm going to add a comment in here um, cells dropping off online appears to be website issues I'm actually going to save that and, and reassign it to Zoe. Now, what we're going to do here is, Zoe, why don't you share your screen um, and take over there? Um, is that assigned to Zoe? Another thing I could have done there is, um, is actually trigger a workflow with another system. So obviously, I assigned it to a person in this case. I could have also done something like generate a, a trouble ticket in say our JIRA system so that um, you know it puts it into a queue where people can pick up on that on that particular issue. Um, so assignment doesn't necessarily have to be to a person. It can be to a person, to a system, to both. So in this case, you know, I started the issue, it appears to be website related. I reassigned it to Zoe over in IT. She's now looking at metric insights and Zoe looks like you got an alert there. Yeah, so it looks like I got an, uh, a, an alert from John Berg. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. It looks like the Canada Daily Sales have dropped. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click that metric there. I'm going to see, sure enough, the sales have dropped. I can go ahead. I want to see what, what has caused this. I can click on that data point. Sorry. Shouldn't be able to. <laughs> huh. Oh, <that> screen shares. <laughs> Let me just do it here. Yeah. Okay. So if you click on, if you go ahead and click on that data point, I can see that there's other metrics that were impacted. So I can go ahead and click that. 
and I want to see uh, Canada website visits. Go ahead. I overlay the the Daily Peak website visits, and sure enough, there is a low from the website in Canada in that region. So I'm going to go ahead and investigate what's going. And it looks like that we push an update to the website in that region and we're having issues. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll back to the previous version and get things going again. And I'm going to go ahead and click that alert. I'm going to acknowledge it and say we have resolved it. And I'm gonna add an out uh, website is back up and running. Let me know if there are more issues and I'm going to save it. So the alert got triggered. I reassigned it to Zoe. She's gone in, investigated the problem. Obviously a simple example here, solved in one step, but she's been able to go in and, and um, update the, the status of that alert. You'll see when she resolved it, it actually changed it to, um, to gray, so it's grayed it out. So any issues that get resolved I left um, as part of the audit trail here, or I can see that they've been resolved though by the fact that they're gray. Um, if I scroll down the bottom, I can also see a, a history of, of what we've just been through here. So initially the alert was triggered. I, I, I acknowledged it and reassigned it to IT. Zoe picked it up. She, uh, she went and investigated, resolved it, and it's been, it's been resolved here. So I'm just going to take the screen share back here um, and show my screen again. Um, so a very simple example of sort of tracking what's happening with alerts and, and tracking uh, an audit trail through the concept of a workflow. Um, what you now have in Metric Insights is an alert inbox as well, where I can get access to anything that I'm involved with. So any workflows that, that I'm, uh, I'm responsible for, or any alerts that I'm actually watching so I can see what status those, those alerts um, have at any particular point in time. So my alert inbox gives me access to, again, anything that I'm responsible for, lets me see any subscribed alerts and, and where they're at and what's being taken care of. It also allows me to, um, get a managed alert digest every day. So again, rather than relying on people to come in and, and track all this stuff through their inbox, anything that I might be tracking, um, that I might be responsible for, or that I might be involved with, I can get a summary of the status of all those managed alerts in that, in that daily digest. So again, a new piece within, um, within the 5.1 release, and again, a way of tracking and, and managing, uh, managing the resolution of, of any issues. Um, so alerts and anomaly detection, a lot going on there. Um, I mentioned before we introduced the, the concept of data sets within, within our 5.0 release. Um, just a reminder, what is a data set? Well, it's the ability to go out to, to a particular source. In this case, I've got a Tableau dashboard here. Um, you know, it could be Click, could be a database, could be anything. Um, and the concept behind data sets is oftentimes these dashboards will contain a lot of useful information. So in this case, I'm looking at sales and marketing metrics by lots of different channels, by different countries, by different product categories. And as a user, unless I'm coming in every day and filtering through all this content, potentially I miss stuff. Um, so the data set concept is the ability to go out every day and snapshot what exists within that dashboard across all the different filter combinations that we were just looking at. So immediately I've got a history and a snapshot of, of what's changed um, in, in my sales and profit figures in this case. Um, by doing that, it then allows us to start looking for exceptions within that data. And so I can start to do things like compare different instances of those snapshots. So I'm looking at the last two days and looking for changes where, you know, perhaps something like sales has increased more than 100% over the previous day. 
So which channels, countries, product combinations exist in that dashboard on this day where sales have increased more than 100%? And immediately I've gone from looking at what's almost sort of 90, 100 different combinations to narrowing it down to half a dozen where that criteria is met. So data sets are a very good way of sort of looking for exceptions in the data that you, you might be interested in highlighting. Then allowing you to generate reports off of those exceptions. And an example against that Tableau dashboard shows the exceptions at the top. So these are the combinations where sales was greater than 100% over the previous day and the live Tableau dashboard down the bottom. So what I can do is now click on any of these exceptions and it's going to pre-filter the dashboard to, to where those exceptions exist and I don't have to go hunting for them myself. Now what we've done is you can also take that a step further now and start to push that out. So I can subscribe to receive these exceptions or push them out to a third party via email. And in doing that, so if I subscribe to this, I can say how often do I want to get it, part of my sort of daily, weekly, monthly, whatever schedule. By doing that, it's going to start pushing out what we call an exception report via email, where again, I get access to those exceptions at the top. And actually an image of what the dashboard looks like for each of the pre-filtered combinations um, for those exceptions that we see in the table at the top. So again, we were uncovering a different sort of anomaly here. Rather than looking for outliers in metrics, we're able to look for exceptions in, in whole sets of data that are being snapshotted over time. Um, and, and in doing that, you're helping your users sort of cut through the noise and get to what's critical very quickly in, uh, in, their, in their particular dashboards and reports that exist today. Um, a new piece that we have added to data sets as well um, in this 5.1 release is the ability for, for users to easily create metrics off of these data sets. So by the nature of snapshotting this data every day, now we have access to it in, in the metric insights environment, and we can make it very easy for users to, to capture, or oh, sorry, to create metrics off of it. So that exception report that I was just looking at, all I have to go in and do is say build report, and I will end up with the report that we're looking at here without having to have technical knowledge of the underlying dashboard. Equally, I can now source metrics off of this data set, which I'm just gonna go back and change to the full view. I can source metrics off this data set very easily. So we've got a snapshot of what it looks like down the bottom. I may want to start to create profit and sales metrics off of this. All I have to do is what the frequency of the metric, um, which, uh, which value am I interested in? Let's create a sales metric. It's going to use the snapshot date. I give it a name, so call it test. Um, I say, how do I want to aggregate it? If I want, I can even dimension it, say by channel or country. And very quickly, I can then say add metric, and boom, I've got a metric within the system. You know, if I want to add profit in as well, and dimension that by something different, um, I can, I don't have a channel dimension, let's pick product category. Um, again, now I have two metrics in the system. I say build metric, it's going to go and create those tiles. So immediately without having you know, knowledge of the underlying APIs into those systems or having to write SQL or anything like that, by producing these data sets, users now have a very quick way of, or, or admins have a very quick way, however you want to distribute this, of creating metrics on top of them. So oftentimes we're seeing very distributed sort of teams within large organizations. Um, where you may want to have different groups responsible for different data sources. We can publish data sets as groups centrally. We know the data is correct and they can go and build their own metrics very easily. Um, 
So we've got a couple of questions popping up. I'm, I'm just going to park them to the end because we're almost there now with, uh, with the demo and we'll do all the questions in one go um, as they're coming in now. Um, but again, just to summarize on, on what we've looked at today, um, you know, those pillars of, of the product, so the portal, getting everything in one place, the um, metrics, uh, so the distribution, pushing that out through email and, and um, IGS and, and immediate alerts, uh, the concept of metrics and, and anomaly detection, where we've introduced the idea of, of managed alerts, and um, finally, this, this concept of data sets and exception reports that um, allow your users to really more easily uncover what's, what's critical within those dashboards without having to hunt through. And then finally, this, this ability to much more easily create metrics in the system. So Zoe, looks like we got a, a few questions coming through. Yep, sure. Uh, One question, uh, how regularly can data be measured? All right, so a question from Gavin here. How data be measured so really it's dependent on the uh, on the underlying data source um, um, we can go down to minute by minute updates um, so I have a minute metric uh, we don't go any quicker than that we're not doing streaming real time or anything like that but it can be down to the minute by minute you know obviously then any aggregation above that so minute hour day week month quarter whatever it might be um, so you def typically it's defined against the underlying data source that we're going against and we can either schedule that to be in sync with the data that's coming in or we can um, so that it's refreshing at that schedule or it can be triggered by new data becoming up. Cool, another question here. How does the certification happen? So, so let's go back to the portal. Uh, is this from Yogi? Um, so it really is, so per your question, it, it really is just someone um, um, saying that this bit of content has been QA'd and, and certified. So, so it's a user action where they're, they're, they're checking this as certified content and it's at the tile level. So it's not that we're doing anything you know, clever or, or automated on the back end to certify content. It's purely a central team or you know, someone responsible for a data source saying it's been checked and certified. Um, that, by, that then puts a tick on it and allows me to filter by that, that certified content. Another question, can you talk about security and data access? How is that controlled? Yeah, so obviously uh, a key piece to the platform. Um, so, you know, we're, we're really dealing with, with large numbers of users in a, in a lot of cases here, and obviously different users have access to different content. Um, the, the quick answer is obviously you can control access um, either on a tile level or a category level, but also down to individual slices of data. So, you know, looking at that sales metric before, dimensioned by different countries, different users might have access to different countries and they will only see the data that's relevant to them. Um, so you can control it down to the granular level. Um, oftentimes we will sync up with, um, with your existing security models, so whether that's LDAP or Active Directory. Um, we will we'll sync up to those groups so that you're not having to replicate any access rights and metric insights. But you know you can do that in, in our platform if if need be. And it, it's an important piece. You know as we went through all the managed alert stuff and the exception reports where we were looking at things um, dimensioned by say something like region. You know. Metric insights will take care of pushing the right thing out to the right person. So in this case, I'm sat at the top responsible for all countries, but there may be users who only have access to Australia or Germany, and they would only see the exceptions within their region. Another question, how do you set up workflows? All right, so this is this is going back to to this concept of, of the managed alerts. So I'm just going to go back to our metric here, as it's it's probably easier to, to show it. Um, just going to go and edit that that minimum we were looking at, and take you behind the scenes here a, um, a little bit. 
bit. But essentially, a workflow is, is fairly straightforward. It has a, a few components. It has the concept of, um, of state, uh, statuses. So um, let, me, uh, let me just edit this one. So you can add any sort of steps that you want the workflow to go through. Um, you know, simple example we have here that we used, we have three steps, new, in progress, and resolve. There's a state, so is it still open, and what is the closing state that we, uh, we have? Um, but these can be anything that you want, and you can have as many steps as you want. Um, so as a status, there's an initial severity to the, um, to the workflow. So you'll remember when Zoe was going through, we, we had high, high sort of level of severity, I think, on our alert. And then the important thing is you have down the bottom different roles that you are, you are assigning. And so we had a simple example where we had the assignee role. That was me who received the alert initially. And then you can have roles for people who are just following or watching the alert as well. And the role defines how they're going to be notified. So is it immediate? Is it something that you want to include in their digest? Um, you can define things like, you know, does it require someone to acknowledge it, like we used in our example? Um, there's a concept of auto-closing the workflow. So in, in our example, if we go back to our metric here. Uh, let me go back. Um, we did not auto close it, which is why it remained open until Zoe actually went in and marked it as resolved. If I'd auto closed it, the moment the condition was no longer met, it would have closed it automatically and, and we could have got on with things. So the workflow is, is sort of a separate thing. You define it as, um, again, statuses or steps, has assignees and roles and a few configuration options that I then can assign to one or more um, alerts when I define them. Okay, how are we doing for time? So we're, we're trying to finish by 11.45 here. We have a couple more questions, so let's, um, let's yes. look at these. See, uh, can you explain how you capture data in a data set? Yeah, so obviously um, we looked at sort of building metrics off the data set, you know, um, a good question. How do we, uh, how do we get the, the data in there in the first place? Well, for, for those familiar with sort of metric insights, you'll see it, it's the same as, as how we build metrics or reports off of um, underlying data sources. But just to give you an idea, I'm going to click on the gear here. This one was actually being sourced from that Tableau dashboard that we were looking at before. So Metric Insights has this plugin layer where we can connect to different types of underlying data. So in this case, I'm going against the Tableau server, but it could, could have been anything that sources this data set. I say, how often do I want to go and snapshot that data? Um, so this is related to the question we had earlier from Gavin, I think. Uh, how often can the data be measured? I can define the schedule that I want to go and update this. Because um, I'm connecting to Tableau here, it exposes all the workbooks that I have on my, on my Tableau server. I can pick the one that I'm interested in, pick the fields that I'm interested in pulling back, and then setting it to go. And every day, in this case, it's going and snapshotting that workbook. If I was going against an underlying data source, such as a, a database, I'd be writing SQL in, in this, uh, in this uh, area here where um, uh, we've got the columns coming from Tableau. All right, let's just see if there's any other questions coming in here. I think we've got to the all, Zari, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, there, is a, there is one more question. Is this, I think this came on early on in the chat window that I missed, um, but is this a third party BI tool, um, or Metric Insights? This is the Metric Insights platform. It, it is our BI tool. We sit on top of, of third party tools like hopefully you've seen in the demo. Uh, could you please share the latest, latest data sources, non-BI, what cloud data sources? Um, um, if you go to metricinsights.com forward slash plugins, you'll see, um, you'll see, I think, the latest update and, and lists of those plugins. Um, to give you an idea, though, I'll, I'll show you what we've got on our demo server here. Um, if I go to data sources and I click on 
a new data source. Data sources are split into sort of two categories. One is the ability to query databases or data sources via JDBC drivers. Um, and you can upload any sort of JDBC driver into a system and query that. Um, or it's using our plugin architecture where we're um, typically talking to other um, system APIs. It's you know, categorized by different BI tools, big data sources. There's a question here around cloud data sources. You can see what I think is a pretty um, comprehensive list of, of what we have plugins for today. So things like Salesforce, Zendesk, um, few, Adobe, a few others there, Google applications. And then we have some more generic plugins um, down the bottom, RSS feeds, uh, flat files, that sort of thing. Um, take a look at the plugins page on the website. You can also see details of how we connect to those data sources at help.metricinsights.com. We publish all our documentation up there. Um, there may be a couple of additional ones in there that aren't on the website. All right, I think we've hit 11.45 on the dot, which is what we were aiming for. Um, appreciate everyone's time today. I'm happy to answer additional questions. Um, if you want more info, you can email info at metricinsights.com. Um, we also have a free trial. Uh, you just go to metricinsights.com and it's at the top there you can sign up for. Um, so thanks for everyone's time today. Uh, we will be sending out the recording to everyone who registered, so look out for that.